My name is Tiffany Payone and I'm a software engineer at the New York Times. I went to music school and got a degree in music business management. Um, I graduated in 2009 when the music industry wasn't in a great place, so I kind of uh, fumbled around for a while, ended up working in tech, um, starting in customer service and going into like account management and project management. And I found that my favorite part of my day was working with developers. It was uh, problem solving, it was creative thinking. I, I felt that when I was working with developers, I got a little bit of that same creative spark that I felt when I was in music school, whereas everything else that I was doing kind of felt like drudgery. And so I decided to um, learn how to code and see what it would be like to be a developer. Yeah, I was actually really surprised to find that um, music and coding have a lot of similarities. There's a lot of pattern recognition, there's a creative aspect to the problem solving, and there's also this feeling of, um, I specifically studied songwriting um, and voice before I decided to major in music business, and there is that same feeling of working on something over and over and over again, and feeling like you're never going to get it, and then this great high that you get when you finally get something to work. And it feels exactly the same when you're coding. Um, I think one of the things that I was really nervous about when I was going into Flatiron was that I didn't really have any sort of technical background. I'd worked with a lot of developers, but I hadn't touched code except for my application process. And I hadn't been in a math class for probably eight or nine years. So I had a lot of people telling me, you know, that's really hard, you're gonna need to know math. I can't imagine changing careers at your age, things like that, which I was only 27, so it's a little ridiculous. But I think I'd tell anyone who's sort of doubting themselves to just, to just jump in. It's never going to be a bad thing to know how to code. Even if you end up moving into product or you go somewhere totally different with your life after the fact, it's a skill that is applicable um, to pretty much anything. So I was actually... Um, in the process of enrolling in a post-bac program at NYU, which was going to get me up to speed on my math so I could apply to do a master's in computer science. I didn't really know any other way, and I wasn't interested in going back to undergrad because I'd only been out of school for about three years. So as I was sort of going through the process of mapping out what my life was gonna be like and looking at all of the costs and the loans I was gonna to need to take out, someone recommended Flatiron School to me, and I thought that it seemed like a much less risky thing to take these three months off of work and then to just go ahead and get started in a career and see if I even liked coding. Um, and I'm really glad that I made that choice because I would have just been getting out of school probably at the beginning of last year, if not summer, so I would have been so far behind um, where I am now. It was just a ton of fun. It was really nice kind of coming from where I'd been in my career, which uh, when you're in client services and account services, there are a lot of people who've been doing it for many years and there's sort of this like jaded, sad uh, sort of feeling to the job a lot of times because people are just kind of burnt out. And so I went from this feeling of like the burnout adult world to remembering what it's like to not just be in school, but to be really passionate about what you're doing. And I met people from all sorts of different backgrounds, and everyone was really caring and kind and intelligent, and it was this sort of reinvigorating thing that I don't think you usually get in adult life. I think Flatiron does a really good job of teaching you to look at something that appears impossible and just dive headfirst into it. And then to know as you're going through it uh, what kind of being stuck or what the learning points feel like. So I used to look at things like, uh, for example, after Flatiron, I ran my first half marathon and I've never been an athletic person, but it was the experience that I learned at Flatiron that taught me, okay, this is week five, you're feeling injured, you're feeling weak, you're feeling like there's no way I'm ever gonna make it past this one benchmark, but you've been here before and you, you know that this sort of feeling of like wanting to give up is exactly that moment where you're about to break through a barrier. And that's helped me with every difficult project that I've had at work. It's helped me with so many things in my personal life. And so now when I look at something that feels sort of unattainable, I know that it is attainable. It just is gonna take a lot of those moments of checking in with myself and going like, I've been here before and I'm gonna get through it. 
So I was really lucky. I finished flat iron school and I had a, um, an offer for a paid internship six days later at Constant Contact. I was the first developer under our tech lead to begin developing two brand new Rails apps um, for the company's first foray into uh, social media advertising as an add-on to email marketing, which is what Constant Contact does. So it was sort of the dream experience because I got to do what you would be doing at a startup or what we were doing at our Flatiron, um, for our Flatiron School projects, but instead I was doing it for this company at scale. And I was hired after my apprenticeship there to take on the project and saw that through its initial launch about six months later and then uh, launched several other sort of spin-offs of the project over the course of my two years as a full-time employee at Constant Contact. It was probably about a year and a half into my time at Constant Contact when I started talking to the New York Times. I got to know a few people um, who worked here through some Ruby conferences and then just kind of like Twitter and Slack. And I started talking to the person who's now my manager seven months before I actually received a job offer. Um, the project that I work on is the New York Times cooking app. It's an app that I've been using since pretty much it launched and I was always a really big fan. So when I heard that there was an opening, I talked to them and then I sort of just waited until things fell into place and they came back and said, there's an actual opening for this now, would you like to apply? We are part of the beta division of the New York Times. So we kind of operate like a lot of little startups within the company. And the cooking application was started about two and a half years ago. And what we did is we took um, the 15,000 recipes that we had from the New York Times food section over many years and digitize them in one launch of an application. So um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I work with a team of about 15 to 20 different people. Um, I work heavily with design, editors, product, marketing, as well as um, I think eight other engineers, front end, back end, and iOS to develop new features for um, both the iPhone app, which I support as a back-end engineer, not directly as an iOS developer, and then for the website itself. Listen to whatever your career advisors at Flatiron School say. If they tell you to take the job, take the job, even if it doesn't seem like your dream job. If they tell you to change something, change the way that you're doing something, they have a lot more knowledge about what they're doing than what what you know. And even if it seems like weird or counterintuitive, there's probably a reason for it. So just give it a shot. I was surprised at how much I love being a developer and how much, how creatively fulfilled I feel by it. Like I said, it's strangely a lot like music. And I found that when I was a project manager, I was doing a lot of stuff outside of work to get that creative sati satiation. And as a developer, I kind of come home and just feel like, ah, okay, I did something that was, that felt productive. Um, I kind of thought that I would go into product or something like that after uh, a few years as a developer, but I've actually discovered how happy I am just doing what I do, which is a really nice thing and kind of a big relief. Here, at least at the times, we have a more technical path. So my, my goals for the next few years are to stay technical and um, to just get better at, um, to get better at, both my technical skills and also being uh, being better at seeing the big picture.